In the early 20th century, a coterie of poets gathered in Nashville, Tennessee, determined to redefine the way the world viewed the South. They would prove that the South could produce highly intellectual art. But even as these modernist poets fled the constraints of the Old South, the South would forever have her hold on them. Reuniting to defend the region, they found their paths diverging, their relationships strained, and their reputations in question. Whether fleeing or defending, they remained literary fugitives. Post-World War I America. Model T's rolling off assembly lines, flappers are all the rage, and the new sounds of jazz excite and energize audiences. But despite an abundance of activity and apparent growth, the war to end all wars damaged life well beyond the battlefield. The extent to which the First World War had a tremendous impact on the American intellectual mind is frequently forgotten. The sense of alienation, the sense of reservation about human reason and the reliability of history, uh, all of the things that we see coming out of World War I and the lost generation and the expatriates in Paris, those things were part of the Southern experience too. Nashville, Tennessee was growing along with the rest of America a city fractured by the Civil War and now the loss of another generation of young men. It adapted by the growth of industry and a focus on education. Vanderbilt University, newly separated from the Methodist Episcopal Church, endeavored to offer a first-rate education to its students. The fugitive poets basically were two sets. There were people who were faculty and students at Vanderbilt in the early 1920s, and there were some townies and they would get together and argue about poetry. Here's a group of very bright young men with very good education. This was a university group for the, for the most part. And they were coming out of the old traditional southern small town and the popular poetry of the time was the poetry of idealism. The uh, original um, arrangement was a combination of uh, intellectual curiosity, artistic talent, and an exchange of ideas among people who brought different intellectual interests to bear. And they just felt a kind of need to recreate, to make new from the beginning. Since the civilization up to 1917 had clearly failed, what made the fugitive different and made it lasting is that no less than four of them became professional men of letters. The professional poets were John Cor Ransom and Donald Davidson, Alan Tate, and Robert Penn Warren. All four of them were Vanderbilt graduates at different times. It had to do mostly with a regional challenge, that nobody in the South could be smart that the South was, as H.L. Mencken said in 1917, the Sahara of the Beaux-Arts. You know, down there, if you added up the IQ of everybody in the South, it still wouldn't come to a double-digit number. And he challenged the South regionally. Everybody in the South who aspired to any kind of cultural life at all had read that essay. And they probably had a picture of H.L. Mencken up on their walls and threw darts at it or something like that, or, you know, a voodoo doll and they stuck pins in it. 